We have a very important broadcast lined up for you today. We have some in-studio guests, but first I want to direct you, if you're a radio listener, to our top story today. It's up at DrudgeReport.com. It was the top story. It's now moved to the second story in the right-hand column. DHS training video, white middle-class Americans are the number one terror threat. It's also the top story at Infowars.com. It's an Infowars.com story. DHS video characterizes white Americans as most likely terrorists. That is coming up in a detailed report and analysis of their brainwashing program and exactly what they're attempting to do with the divide and conquer system at the bottom of the hour 33 after. Going back to Drudge, we're also going to cover another uh, story that is there, and that is America's era in space ends. That is what NASA is telling us. Now we've got to go through the UN, the International Space Station, the Russians. Home at last, Atlantis makes historic final landing as a 30-year shuttle program comes to a glorious end. And I have a whole stack of deindustrialization, post-technological uh, reports, how it is the stated design that the West be deindustrialized and only private corporate technological reservations be allowed to develop high-tech systems. It's all part of the economic development zones. It's all part of the inland ports. Uh, it's all part of the university slash corporate systems with Google and others. We're going to break down this key area uh, coming up today as well. But first, I want to get into all of the other news let me just do this. I, I'm going to just read you the headlines of the top seven stacks I have here. Florida makes 63 million selling driver's license info. It's illegal, but they're doing it. Lawyer, cop scanners cross the line, police tracking everyone in real time. Boston Herald, here's another. Reuters, police to begin iPhone iris scans amid privacy concerns without warrants. It dovetails with this. Austin Water Releases 2010, they always do it a year late, Environmental Leadership Report. Uh, and they have uh, put out on the city of Austin's website the top 10 water wasters giving citizens names. Just like they publish all over the country in newspapers, but cities also do it. The names of concealed weapon holders. It's part of a form of harassment. Absolutely criminal. This is what government does with the data they have on you, violating the Privacy Act, uh, the, cons uh, the, the different acts that protect citizens' information. You're not supposed to use Social Security for ID number under federal law, but then the feds demand it. It's all part of just the open criminality where they are above their own laws. Also, Pentagon looks to social media as new battlefield. French news agency, we told you this four years ago, now it's admitted they're taking over the entire web with the internet kill switch takeover system. Also, uh, Richard uh, Mendenhall sues champion after 911 tweets prompted sponsor drop. Uh, state prosecutes sports fan for saying mean things on Facebook about a football player in England. He's facing years in prison. That is just some of the news dealing with the police state that is coming up uh, on the economic front here today. And I'm going to go back through all this in more detail. Obama U-turns as he accepts extension of debt limit for a few days if a broader deal is in place. I thought the world would end if we didn't do that. Bloomberg, U.S. consumers relying on credit for basic needs. The debtor nation, once the greatest creditor nation, the greatest debtor nation, gets deeper into banker bondage to the fiat money that we give them in banker bailouts, <laughs> which aren't bailouts, they're takeovers. Jobless claims rise above expectations. Reuters, that's even with cooked federal numbers. We are three years into a depression by every mainline economic barometer. But they tell you we left the recession two years and two months ago in June of 2009. Continuing, unemployment benefits rise as job growth falters. 
Robo signing fraud continues. Surprise, the banks are accelerating their criminal activity, taking homes they don't even have deeds for and never owned any part of. Total criminal takeover. Why not? They started 12 years ago taking all of the death benefits of World War II vets through current vets when you die of cancer or in a car wreck or in combat, and they, you, they get you to sign on to take part of your money out for life insurance. They steal it. The deal was signed 12 years ago with the big insurance companies in secret. Declassified last year, Bloomberg reported on it. No one got in trouble. They signed with the federal government to be allowed to steal all your money. But they say you've got to cry when they put troops on TV at a sports game and support the troops by feeding them into a meat grinder. Continuing, see, I'm unpatriotic because I want the troops to get their money that they paid into because I'm evil. Continuing, uh, I should just flag, fly an American flag out front of the office and made in China and then flush the troops down the toilet, then I would be praised as pro-military. See, it's all about form and packaging over reality. They put a, 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 a load of horse manure in a box and then put on the outside of it that it's chocolate cake. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not. It doesn't pass the smell test. Continuing, Deficits and stimulus only delay the inevitable economic collapse. Detailed analysis, Bob Chapman at Infowars.com. Continuing, Fed preparing for U.S. default, says Plosser, uh, top economic analyst uh, in Reuters. Uh, Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank President Charles Plosser said the Fed has for the past few months been working closely with the Treasury, ironing out what to do if the world's biggest economy runs out of cash and defaults. That's always been their job. Milk us, squeeze us, get in as deep a debt as they can through fraud. Over 90% of it, not our debt, the international bank's debt. And then they have the politicians have us sign on to their debt. And then we give them the tens of trillions. And then we pay interest on the money we gave them. That's f fractional reserve banking in the end game. Also, New York Times uh, reporter promotes eugenics and, quote, death panels amid budget crisis. Now they're out in the open saying, yes, they're death panels. Yes, they're good. You'll keep your jobs if we kill grandma. What did um, Bill Gates say in speeches last year? We've played the different speeches. He said, yeah, they're death panels. We, we don't take care of grandma and we, and we let her die and we get 10 teachers. They're selling and the people are clapping. Oh, yes. You know, the idea that somebody's got to lose for you to win. That's a cannibalistic imploding economy. The globalist main job is putting the brakes on a global economy. They want you dependent. The truth is with mechanization, machines, factories, robotics, technologies, we should all be living like kings. But they don't want that. They want a post-industrial world. In their own statements, NASA, the Pentagon, and, and oh, and then they respond to the economic degradation they've created with a, quote, green U.N. army to occupy countries that are imploding under IMF World Bank austerity. In fact, I never covered that ye yesterday, crew. Will you go into yesterday's stack and pull me? There's like three articles about the green helmets uh, and uh, the, the carbon taxes. You don't pay your carbon taxes or do what they say. The U.N., quote, green helmets invade, but it's not war, it's peace. Kind of like when Obama backs all these al-Qaeda rebels all over the world to overthrow or try to overthrow governments and then openly say, well, this is good, al-Qaeda. And it, it's peace when, when our rebels attack. And then if they're losing, then the, the, the NATO and the U.S. start bombing. It's not war. It's kinetic action. It's peace. So I'm going to get into all of that. Uh, continuing uh, here with other economic news. The stack is thick. I'll get to more of that uh, later. Now, remember, coming up at 33 after, the big story. They've got ads that, uh, DHS ads that show black people and Hispanics and others seeing white people. All the terrorists are white, and it zooms in on big blue eyes, animated, glowing like, like glacial ice. And, and it's just the whites are everywhere. The whites are everywhere. They're going to get you. You know, the, 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 the white Al-Qaeda. See, first they tell the good old boys, we're going to take all the rights away of the brown people. And the good old boys are like, good, get them brown people, kill them, glass parking lot them. We get all the internal documents. It's all about gun owners, conservatives, returning veterans. Uh, then after they've got the stuff in place, they flip it and say, it's white people. They're everywhere. Now, that's already in the internal uh, police training manuals. But um, that's coming up at 33 after. Okay, continuing with economic news. Euro reaches 11th hour as Angela Merkel and Nicolas Sarkozy hold crisis talks. 
And you notice how this works. Europe has now had three bailouts of the banks in the last three years. The United States has had an open window of just perpetual, quote, bailouts. 70 plus percent of the money we now know going to foreign banks and families and individuals, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, their foreign subsidiaries, tax free. While their own media groups promote fixing things by raising taxes on the rich. They mean your neighbor that lives in a bigger house than you. They are exempt. The ultra rich are exempt. They sick the giant welfare dependent class on what's left of the middle class. Then everyone's poor and there's no way to escape the bondage. And then the government jobs or contracts are all you can get because you're post-industrial and your economy's been destroyed and you're totally dependent. It's a sharecropper, neo-feudalistic, fascistic system. Every one of those words means something. When I say a sharecropper economy, look up what that means, where you're dependent, where you're worse than a slave. Because slave owners, if you study the Caribbean, you study North America and the colonies, then after and slavery, predominantly blacks, if you study slavery... You very, very quickly learn that the slaves, the black slaves had it horrible, but the white indentured servants, Irish and, and others, uh, you know, they were the uh, uh, first waves of, of, quote, poor Europeans. Uh, most of you have ancestors that were indentured servants. You would sign a five, seven, or ten-year contract, and you would come here, but then they would make you pay for your room and board and other things, and most people never got off the plantation. And then if you didn't, if you tried to run, they would actually put you in torture stocks. They would lock your arms and head up in a torture position many times till you died or lock you up in a cage. Yeah, it was only the Constitution got rid of that cruel and unusual punishment. And uh, that's what people aren't don't understand. And the, and the sharecropper owners... That the white sharecroppers a lot of times would starve to death. And the way it would be put down in the books by the sharecropper owner would be, oh, they you know, they died of sickness because you would get malnourished and then die of a normal cold that wouldn't kill somebody who was getting enough nourishment and be, uh, because you didn't need to take care of them. And you would have to buy your products from the company store under the contract if you wanted a shirt or a dress for your daughter. And then your children would grow up slaves of the sharecropper system. Now, when blacks got emancipation proclamation, they then became sharecroppers, most of them. And then a lot of black folks ran to the north and other areas where they found just as much uh, tribalism, racism, whatever you want to call it, uh, competing for resources, and then tried to form their own communities just so they could have... That's why folks tend to put themselves in their own community, just so they could have some type of economic ecosystem to uh, buy, sell, and trade with each other. And I'm not saying that segregation was good. The point is, is that then they wanted to get rid of the thriving, wealthy black communities that had developed with their own economies, their own banks, their own grocery stores, their own churches. And so the Great Society came in as a way to have the state come in, pose as liberals, bring in money to pay the women not to have men in the house so that the society would break down, so the narcotics could be brought in, so then the young black males could be put in prison, which were colleges for crime. And now that same model is being duplicated out to everyone. So that's why they want to destroy the middle class and make us modern sharecroppers where we all either get government contracts for business or are on some type of assistance or welfare, or they take part of your paycheck for life, steal the money, and then hyperinflate the currency and steal the value of your Social Security and your pensions, whether they're public or private. This is how the globalists operate. They do not want you to be independent. And sure enough, a uh, third round ended a few months ago of trillions of dollars of European taxpayer money being pumped into private banks and private families. And so just as soon as they got hundreds of billions more in the Greece bailout, uh, now they're back for more and the contagion is spreading. Oops, uh, now more countries need to be bailed out. But it's not really countries. They always want to put the blame on the people. It's not Italy. It's not Portugal. Their government traders signed on to the derivatives, so the government investments now have been devalued. And so the bankers that sold them the fraudulent instruments don't go to jail. They get trillions more to prop up those very instruments.